Hey, what up, peeps? It's your boy, Mikola from Mikola. Exams are finally over, and now I've actually got around to making a video. I figured this would be useful since I sank way too many hours into research university, so I might as well share my opinion with you. On that note, this list is completely opinion, and if I don't mention a certain great at university, that means I'm probably still taking into consideration for this list. I'm just not mentioning it because it's uh, not that different from the average university here. And uh, I think computer science courses are a bit different because no matter where you go, you're probably guaranteed to be in uh, lectures of hundreds of students and no professor interaction. And because you can actually find most of the content online anyway, there's that, that part of the course is much less important and uh, other stuff like career services, location, study opportunities matter a lot more. And that one does matter if you plan on repeating your student eventually, which you probably should if you're studying computer science because you only pay 1.3 grand for that year instead of 9k which is pretty useful because yeah you basically get a 10k lower student debt i'm also assuming second year entry for scottish universities and english fees for everything to make it more standardized so obviously if you're paying scottish or eu or international fees then this list would be comp a bit different i'll go through these in alphabetical order so starting off with bath bath has some nice things about it for example it has flexible offers so so if you do EBQ or you get an A star but get a B in another grade, then they count for that. And the location is kind of nice. Uh, Bath is a really nice city. I've been there, but it's kind of expensive, and there's nothing really setting it apart from everything else. And their year abroad does require you to do an extra year rather than actually being part of a course. Uh, so there's, I think it's going to be a D tier because there is no real reason to choose Bath over some of other universities here. Uh, Birmingham's kind of similar in the year abroad they make you add do an extra year for it in fact if you go on the website it actually says that for your for third year abroad which you spend uh is just second year content repeated which is kind of pointless in my opinion if you if you're trying because it doesn't reduce your tuition fees and you're just kind of wasting a year other than that it has some nice things for example they do let you do your day structures and algorithms uh, module in your first year after second year which means it's going to be easier to get internships after first year and they also do a degree apprenticeship which um is kind of unfair to compare but basically it lets you not have a student debt but if other universities don't offer it uh, don't offer it and it's not like part of a standard course so i'm going to ignore that bit but it's worth looking into if you are interested in that specifically but also their course seems to be missing out on a lot of fundamentals compared to other courses on this list and they have a really high dropout rate so it's 30 percent rather than four or five percent like it is for every universities on this list i think that means that there's something like not great about the course if people are actually dropping out because student satisfaction might be okay, okay i'm not i don't really like my university it kind of makes uh does something which i'm not a fan of but it's not enough for me to change course. But if people are actually dropping out at a higher rate than of our universities, I think that's not not a brilliant sign. So I think I'm going to put it in D here as well. Now, this is one of the universities which does the year abroad the proper way in that it replaces your third year rather than adding an extra year. It also seems to be an actual part of the course rather than afterthought tacked on to tick some boxes. The course, in my opinion, is very solid apart from the third, fourth year where you have a bit less choice than the similar courses, but obviously that can change because the upper level modules depend a lot on the researchers which are at the university at the time. So for example, if a professor leaves or an, a new professor com uh, comes into the university, then the, your third and fourth year modules would change at any university. We also have a program where they let you uh, do an unpaid internship and they'll pay you to do it. And overall, it has a pretty good reputation in the industry. I know I've seen a lot of people say that it's a really good course and that it's really practical and helps people learn actually real world skills. So I think overall it's going to be an A tier. Here we go. The next up is Cambridge. I don't think you need to an introduction. Cambridge, without a doubt, offers the best computer science degree in the UK. You literally get a couple master a couple of years after you graduate even if you just did a three-year course, which might not seem like much, but I think a master's can help check some boxes for like really specific jobs and visas. And in fact, if you don't need to spend an extra year studying to get it, it's pretty good. We also run a summer exchange where you can spend one summer doing an independent project at Caltech, and you get a, a stipend of 6K to cover costs, which is pretty insane. You literally get to pick whatever you want to do, years you should, and they pay you 9K to do it at Caltech. Uh, but only some uh, colleges offer it, so you'll have to check for that. But I'm pretty sure nobody is going to argue with me about it. You're probably going to be studying with the best academics and probably the best students in the world. 
for computer science and reputation is unimaginable in the UK. I think it's definitely going to be an S tier. Durham is basically a nerved Cambridge. It has a pretty similar reputation to Bristol overall, I think. And uh, the graduate salaries are higher than average, which of course seems good. We, co we cover our data structures and algorithms in the first year, and unlike Birmingham, we don't do that out of cost of fundamentals like computer architecture. And it's definitely a uni worth looking at if you want the classic university experience because it has the colleges, the, camp the campus, and being in the countryside. So if that's what you're into, that's pre it's pretty good for that. And also 74% of Durham graduates get married to another Durham graduate. So if that's what you're looking for, it's probably a better choice than some others on this list. So it could, could have been an eight here, but because of the fact that you need to do an extra year for a year abroad, Rather than being able to do it as part of a pro pro as a proper part of the course, I think it's going to be in B tier. This one is interesting because while the city itself is a tech hub and has lots of jobs, the graduate salaries are so pretty low. And other than that, Edinburgh has quite a good reputation for its computer science department, and the course ticks off boxes: data structures and algorithms. The first year, least amount of choice, and the year abroad does add an extra year. So I think overall it's about in line of Durham, but the lower salaries are balanced out by the fact that you don't need to do an extra year to do your rod. Alright, I'm going to be honest here, Exeter is definitely not a bad uni compared to all the unis in the country, but compared to this list, it really doesn't stack up all that well. The graduate salaries are pretty low, the location is quite far from any meaningful city worth lots of jobs, the career section really isn't on par with other universities on this list, and that's reflected in this set salaries. The course doesn't seem as complete as the other ones on the list, and I don't think the few things it does right can save it. What's the factor in the fact that it has a worse reputation than the other ones on this list? I really can't put it any higher than F tier. So, I have actually lived in Glasgow for a few years, and let me tell you, the weather will not do you any favours. It's cheap for a reason, and even for a price you pay, I can't say it's worth it. The website is a pain to navigate, so you can't actually see the module options for the course, etc., and it looks like it hasn't okay study abroad program but which doesn't add an extra year but for whatever it has like 99 percent chance of giving you depression and making the, it does make the city look quite grim the graduate salaries are pretty low and i don't think there's any reason to choose glasgow over any other university here so i think i'm gonna put it in f tier next to exeter imperial basically has everything you could ask for apart from that Oxford Cloud. The course is for the inner students are unmatched. The location is probably one of the best in the UK, especially since the Imperial Bursary is likely to cover the difference if your parents don't make too much money. I'm pretty sure they have the best bursaries in the UK. They have year abroad, which doesn't add an extra year, and they let you go to MIT for that year abroad, which is pretty insane. And while for the general public, Imperial might not be a familiar name, on the job, from the job market, Imperial definitely has one of, if not the best reputation out of the unis on this list. Oh yeah, and my graduates literally make like 20k more than average unit in this list, so I think it's going to be an S tier. There we go. Okay, so Kings is in London, which is probably the only good point I have about it. The dropout rate is 30%, which is on par of Birmingham, whereas the normal is like 4 or 5%. And every single person that I've talked to who did the course said that the course was too easy and that there was not enough maths. Combined that with the fact that London is expensive and the uni doesn't offer a higher price than the other unis outside of London, and there is really isn't much reason to choose KCL over the other unis in this list. Apart from the London job market, that was such an E tier over F tier. Manchester University has a better reputation than this list's average because a lot of the first things done in computer science were done here. For example, the first tour of programming computer was done at Bolton Manchester University. Um, the course is a bit different, so for example the teaching and operating systems class, which other courses don't, in, the, in similar categories, so it, you should check it out if you like what modules they offer or not, because that might make you choose it over some other ones. Um, it's the largest undergraduate university after University of London, which is just multiple universities like KCL, UCL, etc. It doesn't offer you abroad at all, and I do wish I don't think it's great, and the graduate salaries are a bit lower than Durham or Bristol, so I think it deserves to be in C tier overall. Nottingham's course really doesn't have that much going for it, other than the fact that you can do an entire four-year degree 
using less than 22k. So if you spend your second year at your Malaysian or Chinese campus and your third year abroad, you will get reduced tuition fee, uh, fees for both years and you get the whole thing for 22k. I guess financial requirements aren't too bad, but it does it gets to be in D tier just because of how cheap it is. Also, so this course is also a bit weird in that it is super small. The average intake is 33 students according to the website last time I checked. And other than that, it's quite a theoretical course. And while it does theoretically have an Oxbridge clout, it's really not on par with Cambridge or MPOs in terms of actual reputation for computer science. Also, there is an independent program called Henry and Proctor Fellowships, which is an exchange, exchange between Cambridge and Oxford and Harvard Yale. But I couldn't find out too much information about it and I don't think Cambridge actually offers it. So maybe Oxford offers it, maybe it doesn't. It's worth looking into if, you're, if you think that's important. Overall, I think it's going to be an A tier. It doesn't deserve an S tier because the course is just too small. I think it would be kind of boring to have a lot of students and therefore a lot of professors dedicated to the subject there. So Fafton is known to be pretty good at lower level computer science stuff, so if you're into that, it might be good. But so far, each and every person I've talked to has told me that Southampton is a bit of a dump, and it's still kind of expensive because it's relatively close to London, although not really commuting distance. It does have higher than average graduate salaries, which is probably because of the fact that it's close to London. And of course, it's about average, based on what I saw of it, but the year brought us an extra year to your degree, so I think it's overall it's going to be in C tier. I'm going to be honest, I didn't do too much research on St. Andrews. It's got a pretty normal course. They let you do a year abroad without adding an extra year to your degree. And it's pretty posh, so if you want to be posh, you, you can probably be posh there. Um, it does have pretty high average uh, graduate salaries, so I think that's good. I think so it's going to be in B tier. Strathlade has got the same problem as Glasgow, and the web situation is really not ideal. The course looks less technical than most in the list because they do stuff like business modules and ethics etc. Although unlike a certain university in Glasgow, they actually put their module options on their website. For study abroad is better for the University of Glasgow you got you've got more choice and doesn't add an extra year. But the fact that they unironically used a meme stock image on their website means they can't really put them any higher than eight here. I'm sorry. Sire doesn't actually offer a four-year degree, only fear degrees for computer science, which is a bit strange, and modules don't look as good as those of average university services. And so they do offer a semester abroad rather than a year abroad, which is nice in fear, but in reality, you don't get that reduced tuition fee and your options aren't that great. Um, it's not really a deal. I guess it's close to London, but Surrey isn't a cheap place to live, and there isn't much to, to choose this university over others. Maybe if you like Surrey and the hills there, then... I guess you could choose it, but it's eight here. A lot of people complain about UCL because the course is understaffed, which means you're probably going to get less support from other places. But for all the courses I saw, the website said it's like 70 or 75 percent independent study. So switching over to stuff like 80 percent independent study really isn't going to make that much of a difference. Um, but UCL does a lot of stuff right. The location probably couldn't be better for computer science students because UCL is literally a five minute walk from Facebook and Google in London. And since it's right next to Euston and King's Cross, that means in later years, once you're out of student accommodation, it's easier to commute from outside of London if you decide to live here. It's definitely expensive and UCL doesn't offer larger bursaries like Imperial does. So you're probably going to uh, graduate with more debt if you go here over other universities on this list. The course itself is really good. Your fourth year, if you do one, is going to be a proper research master's. Uh, so you have amazing choice. You've got like 36 modules to choose from. And there's a lot of AI and machine learning research going on. So if you plan doing something along those lines, this might definitely be worth looking into. We also have a year abroad, which doesn't delay your graduation year. And they have some crazy options like Catholic and Georgia Tech, which although there's a lot of competition, there you do have the option of those and you have other less impressive universities to go to if you choose. So I think it's going to be an 80 overall. Now, work has a pretty solid course. Personally, I wouldn't say it's on par with UCLs, but it's definitely one of the better ones on the list. The location isn't brilliant over, overall, but it is a train right away from London, as there's a super cheap place for very interesting weather. So um, I think it's pretty good in that regard. The graduate sizes are super high, like way higher than average business. Not as high as Imperial, but pretty good. Um, the year abroad isn't amazing. For all of, all of your webpage says is that they have an established exchange program with 
Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, so not too much choice there. Although I think it's pretty good, there's an offer of extra stuff here at UCL and Bristol do, so I think it's going to be a B tier. York is the last one on the list. York is a pretty nice looking in town in the northeast, so there's a lot of investigation for jobs, but it's not too bad. The climate is nice and it's not overly expensive. If they do let you do a second year abroad as part of a three year degree, which means if you're an English student, this is probably going to be the cheapest degree, you, full degree you can get on this list. The course itself seems to be marginally more theoretical than average. I think they're considered quite good if you want to do lower level stuff, but if you do get the basic right, basics right, they cover all the fundamentals due to data structures and algorithms in first year, so I think it's going to be C2 overall. So that concludes this list. If you have, if you think differently, then do comment down below. Maybe I missed out some, or maybe didn't get something right. So do comment down below on your experiences. Other than that, subscribe. Check out my channel. Um, I'll be doing more videos like about university applications, how to choose university, and why I think is is doing a year abroad is such a great thing. See you next time. Bye.